what is spiritual glamour and what is the difference between that and a path filled with wise counsel? That's what we're talking about today with my dear friend Jacqueline Robinson. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Women's Sanctuary, the podcast about tending the soul of women, sisterhood, and the rise of the sacred feminine. I'm your host, Arlia Hoffman. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. I'm Arlia, and this is the Women's Sanctuary, and I'm thrilled to be bringing you this episode today. I had an impromptu idea, and I texted my friend Jacqueline Robinson the other day. She was one of our early guests on the show, so you can go back and check out that episode if you'd like. But I texted her, and I said, I have a question for you. Um, I'd like to hop on and record our conversation, and I'm not going to tell you what the question is. (laughs) And to her credit, she agreed. She's like, I'm I'm there. Let's do it. And that's what this episode is. It is a deep dive into the nature of the spiritual journey. What is spiritual glamour? How does it show up when we're in a, as a spiritual seeker, when we're seeking that which resonates for us? And how can we move from that into a grounded, wise path full of good wise counsel. So uh, if you like, grab a cup of tea or a cup of coffee, settle in and enjoy this really rich conversation. So I was um, reading our favorite astrologer this morning and I was like, Thank you. Oh, oh, have you already read it? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, well, you have an idea what's coming. Um, what I find so interesting is she talks about this Jupiter-Neptune conjunction in Pisces coming up here shortly in a place that you and I have already dealt with, not already (laughs) dealt with. We've already like moved through a process of this. And I, I, when I saw her question, I thought, I can't imagine a better person to ask this question to than Jacqueline Robinson. Well, I don't remember the question, so that's fabulous. It'll be freshly sprung. Perfect. So, um, yeah, so our favorite astrologer is um, Lorna Bevins, one of our favorites. And you know, she does such a great deep dive every month into what's going on. And one of the things she's discussing is a Jupiter-Neptune conjunction in Pisces, which, you know, for me, I'm like, I, I, I don't know what that is. But, but she does such a good job of breaking it down and explaining it. And Pisces is this watery spiritual energy. So you know, it can be very flowy and beautiful and spiritual, but it also has a dark side. Um, And uh, because it doesn't have many boundaries, it's so flowing, there's very little to contain it in a positive or a negative sense. So you could either, you know, in the more pure side, it can, I guess, take us into the flow of spirit and um, keep us keep us in that without the boundaries of ego slowing us down. But then the dark side of that is that it can, we can slip into dark territories where there are no boundaries and there's nothing, no safe container for it. So she, she explains all of this. Um, And of course, for us who are sensitive and empaths, that can be, that could be rather overwhelming. But then she comes to this question. This is an opportune time to ask yourself, how deeply have I been sidetracked by spiritual glamour? (laughs) We have delved into this quite far on multiple occasions over the last, I would say, especially six months, but year or two, we've really been looking at this from many angles. I love the question. Yeah. And, and yeah, you came to mind because for both of us in different ways, but for both of us, this idea of spiritual glamour has been unraveling whatever felt true and authentic and on the path in the past 
now it just, it vaporizes. It becomes something that's just, it was a shell and it not, not to, not to say it wasn't true then, but now it just becomes, at least from my experience, a vapor, something, if something, it's like a, um, a mirage, something that, mm. it, that we thought was true. And it was, it was true for us in the moment. And now it just looks like something completely unsubstantial. So I'm curious for you what this question brings up. How deeply have I been sidetracked by spiritual glamour and that, that phrase, spiritual glamour? Oh, it brings up so much. And as you were speaking and talking about, we, we have navigated this and how real it felt. And because you and I have walked most of the time since we met, which was February of 2016. So we're, we're six years in now. Wow. For most of that time, right? <laughs> For, for much of those six years, you and I, although we may have had this sort of wave undulation of true deep intimacy and connection, it has stayed steady and followed its own rhythm. So we've had the, the pleasure and the, the gift of being able to approach this question quite frankly and through a total depth of intimacy we've mm-hmm. already cultivated and seen each other through. Yes. What I felt as you began to speak frankly is that our our initial meeting which was profound for each of us. Our initial meeting now that I have the advantage of looking backwards began that dismantling. And the beginning of it was a deep dive into every facet of spiritual glamour. Wow. I hadn't even we, taken it back to that moment, but you're so right. Nor I, but that moment for me is when my personal path massively jumped the track and shifted. And I moved into having not just a virtual but a physical, spiritual community because I met you and then you and I met a whole, what was termed at the time, tribe of people, a spiritual community Mm -hmm. through which certainly I, I won't speak for you, but at times we, and certainly I, I gave myself with abandon, complete abandon to every part of it with the belief. And it was, as you say, 100% true at the time that this was it. Mm. This is it. I made it. I found it. There was such an in body because I felt it through my body for the first time, having grown up where feelings and emotions and sensuality and body sensations were all quite taboo. I had this freedom, but this spiritual permission, or I would even say permissiveness for everything and anything that my body said yes to. Mm -hmm. And yet in reality, it was so out of being human at all. So it was actually out of the matter, the the actual physicality of being a human. And the only emphasis, the glamour, as we are talking about, was in how spiritual are you? How much voltage and ecstasy Mm -hmm. and fringe activity can you actually run through your system? And that was deemed holy, which, to be fair, at the time was very true for us. Now, I love your language of it being a vapor or a mirage. I've also felt it as um, a glass coating that has shattered. 
Mm. It was rose colored glass, quite literally, and it has shattered. And there's uh, you and I both know there's more. So I'll pause here for us to sort of digest what's already been brought forth. Yeah, what struck me was you said it was what did you say about the body? It wasn't it wasn't did, are you saying it wasn't grounded in the body? Yes. I hadn't thought as, of it that as way. As much as as much as for my experience at least and people I observed around me in in spiritual community. Mm-hmm. As much as the focus was on, quote, the flesh, Mm -hmm. and finally meeting a a reflection and an experience in real life instead Mm -hmm. of virtual reality that was in the flesh and in the body, it was actually a, a... renegade sort of in the flesh and in the body rather than a get down into the depths of yourself Mm -hmm. and also be a human Mm -hmm. in the flesh was much more about the denied pleasures of religion or culture or society Mm -hmm. and all of the things we've been told we can't do and breaking through those barriers which felt exquisite in moments and yet it, it, it right now as i'm speaking it's almost like watching the bachelor you know it feels exquisite when you're on the date and yeah. he's his full attention is on you and so much intensity and energy and what you believe to be love yes pulses that, through you and that's the glamour it's That's like I was trying to put the words together as the energy was coming in. And it's like using the taboo as a pathway of escapism. Like, like you know, that seems so incompatible, but using, using what seems taboo as a means of es- escapism from what's real. And permission to color outside the lines, not just in a way that's in alignment for you, but to color outside the lines that connected to it is a fuck anything that attempts to redirect this or question Mm. this or even sit next to it. No. So then the authority becomes the being the renegade outside of yourself, like that becomes the God instead of what truth is within you. Yes. And so any being that matches that template of the renegade God becomes the spiritual hierarchy and guru that becomes followed. And that is also that that's sort of a, a different darker facet of the glamour yeah and that's exactly what she's talking about is not just the the guru but this um this fascination with it that becomes that becomes the god the fascination becomes the god the instead of whatever is true in in the body and in the the divine human Yes, yes. In, in it, for me personally, the ecstasy becomes the god, and mm. it also is the drug. It's the god and the drug, mm-hmm. because it's not a true god. It's not. It doesn't. And I don't mean like God in heaven. I mean like God frequency. It carries mm. the the. Um, it's not even a dark god. It's a a a shadow of a god that has a glamorous hue to it. Lord it's almost talks. like uh, I was thinking false sunlight. You know, you've got that gorgeous oh, yeah. sunlight, and uh, the false sunlight I think of in the way that we are looking at this is a disco ball. 
It has this false, Mm -hmm. round, beaming radiation of light. And yet it's not the sun. It's a chintzy replica that's just very glamorous and can hypnotize and draw you in. And it's fragmented. And it's fragmented. It's distorted. Mm -hmm. But it, boy, does it have beautiful prismatic colors, right? Yes, and as you said, it's it's hypnotic, and it's um, it, it's it, it uh, it's ex- an ecstatic can lead to an ecstatic experience, and draws you in, and becomes becomes the experience. That wow. that word hypnotic, just before we move on to the next point, uh-huh. that's part of the glamour. Right. The deeper you were able to go into the ecstasy and the trance and the alternate reality and the hypnosis, the more advanced and spiritual you became. Huh. Yeah. And so the hierarchy. And so the hierarchy. Lorna says, Oh, she, yeah, she's talking about all of this um, and the self-made delusions that come from all of that. Mm. Mm. And she says, critical and discriminating thought is bypassed and feeds the lower ego. I think that's what we're talking yes. about. Yes, yes, yes. I, I agree with that. And when you were speaking about the renegade energy and the shadow of that, two archetypes come to mind, one being the rebel. And a rebel in its purest essence is about Mm non-conformance, non-conforming, Mm non-compliance. In its shadow, that rebel actually has no idea what they're rebelling against because there's no critical thought. There's no connector to a deeper wisdom and the ability to walk oneself through and into what is true. The other is the mystic and the shadow mm-hmm. of the mystic is absolute delusion. Ooh, yes. From this vantage point, the glamour is the, the higher, the glamour, the deeper, the delusion. Mm. Interesting, we're talking about Pisces and Neptune, two water energies. And the if, if you think about that word delusion, one shorter version is a deluge, absolutely uh-huh. underwater, which Lorna talks about the yes. tsunami coming. Yes, yes, you're swept away by whatever you're believing. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. I'm wondering what, so, you know, she's intimating that this type of experience is rising. I'll say rising again, because we know it's been happening and we've experienced it, but she says this fresh wave of this alternate experience is going to become more prevalent. How does one navigate that? How do you you know, I guess it's sort of what did we learn, but also how do you, how do you find what's true? I mean, that glamour is so alluring. It's like, as you said early on, I found it, right? How do you, I guess you don't fight it because you don't want to fight against it, but how do you give it any sort of context into what is actually real for you and what's actually real? Is there, do we have, do we have any, you know, any sort of wisdom we can offer people who suddenly are swept away or swept into um, this tsunami of a spiritual experience? Yes. I, 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 I feel having been through it myself and now being in a place where one of the last conversations you and I had was very much about stepping out 
of spirituality. Mm-hmm. And I say that spirituality in quotes, you know, because I think there's a difference between this new age mysticism and spirituality, the glamour, as Lorna says, and a true connection to the the deeper part of yourself. For some, they would label it spirit. Some would say soul. For me, they're a little bit different. But however you connect to that deeper essence of your being, we, we that has been termed spirituality, and yet it's actually an intimacy with self. Mm. So first of all, clarifying that, and I agree with Lorna that what is coming is a fresh wave. We're not talking about what's coming is people like you and I who've been in spiritual community and we're going to sort of tumble into the next iteration of it. Mm-hmm. Right. I don't see that coming. What I'm experiencing and and I wonder how this is playing out in in the bigger um community of people who are connected to our conversation. What I'm witnessing is people who have been in my circle in one way or another, who were not in this, quote, spirituality way of life. Mm -hmm. Now, as things are becoming more intimate and close in their reality, the average everyday human is reaching out and going, hey, what's going on in the world? I feel like you're Mm -hmm. connected. Hey, I started doing X, Y, Z. You know, somebody said, um, aura photography, what do you think about it? And to me, I'm like, oh gosh, I remember being fascinated with the glamour of aura photography. Mm -hmm. And I'm watching this fresh virgin energy waking up and I don't even like the words waking up. So I'm not talking about being woke. I'm talking about suddenly the reality today feels different than yesterday as though you just woke into a new day Mm -hmm. or a new world. For, For that fresh wave coming in, who are asking, how do I know? You know, the question you posed, Arlia, We've already touched on one piece of it, which is stay connected to the humanity that gives you the brilliance to critically sit back and consider and think and analyze for even a moment. You don't have to go deep into it, getting all just in the brain, because Mm -hmm. that will actually push you into the glamour. Mm -hmm. But allowing your street smarts, your common sense to have a voice in what you're experiencing, number one. Number two, if there are people you've seen who, Lorna said a lot of false gurus are going to start popping up. So the tendency is to lean in and trust one who appears to be a master? How do you discern if there's a true um, depth and evolution? And I'm going to say mastery, but what I am referring to is wisdom, Mm -hmm. wisdom, a ripening, a maturity. If you aren't experiencing that in whoever you're speaking with and any little bit of questioning comes up, trust that. Trust that. If you're going to speak with somebody, a mentor, an advisor, a friend in your life who you feel has been down this path, great. Engage with them. Do not immerse yourself in their truth. Yes, because if they're putting, if they are saying that they have the truth, that's your f- first red flag. But I was, as you were speaking, I was thinking, yes, the, the wise teacher, the experienced teacher always points you back to yourself. You, 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 and they don't yeah. 
tell you who you are. They don't tell you what you need to know. Or they what may, your guides are telling them. What your guides are telling them or yes, absolutely. Or, or any spiritual being. No, trust yourself and know that whatever you need, you have. You don't ever have to give your energy, your um, attention is what comes to mind. And what I mean by that is when we put our attention on something, we can potentially become consumed by it. If you're being yes. consumed, that's not it. Yes. Yes. I was thinking that's all all consuming. It's yes. like it's like tunnel vision. Yes. That is uh, and I would love to just pause right there with all consuming. That is a direct tie to the ecstasy and the glamour that it Mm. becomes all consuming that it's such a high Mm -hmm. that there is an energy of needing to chase it to be in it to be connected to it to be near it to practice it to read about it to learn about it to dive in it's consistently I'm going to go ahead and use the word possessing you. Mm-hmm. That's and, not yes. it. Yes. And in that state, you're willing to let anything collapse around you for it. It's it's kind of the same energy as you would see in a cult. Yes, very much so. And I will say now I consider myself to still have a very deep soul dialogue, connection to nature, Mm -hmm. um, intimacy with what to me feels um, mystical. Mm -hmm. That's not even my word anymore. I don't know what my word is now because it's not spiritual. It's not divine. I guess the closest, purest language that I have is God frequency. Mm -hmm. I still am connected to that, but I will tell you what today, my nervous system is not fried. I'm not chasing and feeling dropped into the dark depths of nothingness when I'm not in the presence of or experiencing the ecstatic high. Mm -hmm. I'm no longer molding my life to constantly and consistently meet that. My my life now is actually, by comparison, ordinary, kind of mundane, (laughs) very (laughs) grounded, right? Yeah. It's very grounded. It's very... It's very much immersed in everyday life. I'm not separate from and trying to maintain that. I'm right here feeding my cats, watching the birds, um, Mm -hmm. taking a course online, making my bed, watching and not even watching, choosing, cultivating how I eat and what I eat and when and my connection to the sun. It's its the simplest of things. And yet the, the current of contentment and a grounded euphoric way of being is very subtle and ever present it's it's this contentment that i can almost reach out and touch most of the time very different what strikes me is that you and i haven't talked in several weeks and that is exactly how i would describe <laughs> my daily life exactly <laughs> like this it's it's a um, it's a joy and a contentment that just wells up from from simplicity and as you were talking i was thinking this is integration like we've always known the word but we didn't know how it actually looked 
And this is integration where it every, as you say, every everything is imbued with the God frequency. Yes. yes. Partly, well, yes, because we choose it, we choose to imbue it, but also because we're um, looking for it. We're just, we're sensitive to it. We, we're aware of it. We can see it. it. It rises up out of, out of making the bed, out of feeding the cats, out of drinking fresh water, whatever we are called to, we find it. Yes. It's a, um, let me close my window with that yard work going on. It is a, as you were speaking, I, I could feel the difference in the sensation. And rather than a spirituality, it is a consciousness mm -hmm. and awareness. And even more simply put, it's a presence, meaning, oh, I'm going to feed the cats. Here you go, cats. It's not an absent from where I'm feeding the cats and I'm putting food in my body and I'm doing this so that I can get to the, the community gathering or the practice or the deepening or the whatever so that I can get there. That's the goal. Right. This way of living is I am present right here. I am present whether I am um, reading something that speaks to me, studying for a course, doing my work, moving my body, preparing my meal, petting my, my cat or dog or my pet, making love to my partner in all of it. I'm not looking forward to the next thing that mm -hmm. will take me, quote, there. I'm here right now. Yes. Yes. Several weeks ago, I was given, maybe it's a couple of months ago now, I was given the Ram Dass phrase again in my meditation, be here, here. Now. now. And I was like, okay, that's, that's just such old news. And, then, you know, and the, the message was, and it is even more important here in this mm. experience we're in. This is, mm -hmm. this is where we get to experience the fullness of what that means. Don't you feel, or do you feel two things one the words we have known have different energy to them now when we speak them the charge is different and two being here now for me be here now previously was be here now so i can experience the fullness of this and this is where the ecstasy is and i'm here and i'm for it and be here now is just be right here. You're watering the plants. You're feeding the cat. You're just sitting outside watching the birds. Outside my window right now, there's a male grackle who's puffing up all his feathers and doing a little <laughs> dance and chatting to the female who she could really care less. <laughs> there's no ecstatic nervous system voltage that happens to me in that. But there's such a beautiful witnessing of what is right here, right now, that I love. That I love. Absolutely. And yes, um, words are, well, I, I ascribe to the idea that words are spells. Mm -hmm. So from whatever level of consciousness we're in, we are in, we access another layer of their meaning. Yes. So for the, yes. for be here now, I was, and this came to me in the depths of depths of grief where I just did not want to feel what was here now. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, the invitation was to, just as you said, to really, yeah, I'm going to use the word immerse, and that's, yes. you know, it's another water word, immerse yourselves in, in every minute action. 
because that's where God is. That's where you are. This is all that there is. And so when I was given that phrase again, there was there was an um an expansion that came with it. Let me see if I can remember it. B meaning to inhabit all of who you are, just be. Acknowledge mm-hmm. your 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 vastness, your simplicity and your smallness and your vastness. Inhabit that that paradox. Be, just be, don't do, you be here situating yourself right here in this in this this physical reality mm. that's in front of you because it's all here with you to be with you to interact with you to teach you and now understanding that this moment is the only thing that's actually real and you know to your point earlier if you're feeding the cats so you can run out the door for some future experience mm. That's the opposite of of present. Um, And there may be some sort of extraordinary event on the horizon, but what really matters is is who who are you being in this moment? Who are you being? Who are you being in relationship to what's around you in this, in this space? And, and who are you being in the space? Right now Hmm. and it it became this multi-dimensional i've got my hands going around my head (laughs) um (laughs) almost like you know kind of like you would envision your own energetic space sometimes i envision an egg just this this multi-dimensional dance in the space where i am i i you know, and, and words don't do it justice. What was what was downloaded for me, but um, I was already sort of aware of that. But now I'm suddenly, um, yeah, just doing my very best to be in every single moment that presents itself to me, and not looking away, not checking out, but welcoming it. And that's, that's mm. not always easy. No, um, we're not accustomed to it. Mm-mm. We're accustomed to leaving what is here. And we're taught that from a young age and we're human and it's natural. Mm-hmm. And yet in current, in the current energetic climate of our planet, that in some ways being right here right now is the eye of the needle. And there is such a calming impact on the nervous system. Mm -hmm. A high percentage of humans do not have a calm, relaxed nervous system. And the spiritual belief is that continually reaching those highs and healing, 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 healing over and over and over and over again is the answer for that. This experience of being here now of what we we are speaking as consciousness is actually rather than hyping up the nervous system in anticipation and euphoric and leaving the physical body where it is actually safe Mm -hmm. this consciousness is welcoming the entirety of the being and of being as you beautifully spoke on home that's the energy of belonging being here now Uh you said as you were speaking about it because being here now in this moment your exact words were because that's where god is and that's where you are and i almost as though it came out of your mouth i heard and that's where you are god Uh uh-huh 
and God from the perspective of a creative and or creator who is creating, cultivating life as you actually truly desire it from that grounded place of being in this world. To your point, I heard it um, I heard it in two different places. First of all, Carolyn Mace years ago, she she just one day was teaching and this statement came this day will never come again, whether it's horrible or amazing. And that's true of this moment Mm -hmm. will never come again. And being here in it, even in extreme grief, which ultimately is love, benefits you. It runs that through your system as what is here now with you, what your Over the years, I have called it a lover, whether it's illness or grief or um, beauty that comes into your world. It's a companion that walks with you for a time. Mm -hmm. And Wayne Dyer said, what's true in the morning is not necessarily true in the evening. Uh That's part of this. allowing and as part of this conversation here's a radical truth about what we are sort of encapsulating here there is a death you and i have both experienced this energy of allowing of allowing death of what we believed was true and mm-hmm. we were committed we were committed, we were leaders, we were, we were inviting others into a space that at the time, in its purity and in its distortion, was all of these energies combined. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And we have had to walk through a dying process to allow our own selves to let go of what was so cherished and at times beautiful because it's not all shadows. There were streams of pure energy coming through to allow all of that, the shadow and the beauty to become shattered Mm -hmm. and reveal what lies beneath, which is this evolution into a cleaner sense of first of all intuiting allowing ourselves that Mm -hmm. that's not simple no that's a it's a cultivated skill Mm mm-hmm born out of such experiences absolutely absolutely i see uh michelangelo cutting away the stone to reveal the sculpture beneath yeah and for me i i I have neither um judgment nor regret for how I experienced all of it. What I Mm -hmm. do have is a keener eye, a more integrated connection to my human as well as my cosmic or spirit or soul being and a wisdom that was forged through taking that path and the fires I encountered along the way. Yes, yes. I was getting an accumulated wisdom, a maturity. Yes. Clarissa Pinkola Estes says that in any cycle like that where you are 
in a rebellious phase, you do your Mm. best to treat yourself as if you were shepherding um, shepherding a, a teenage girl yes, through, through we new were. experiences yeah, because we were um, and, and bringing with it the wisdom that accompanies such exploration. Mm. I don't know. I mean, from my experience, and I think for others, it's that's a really tall order. It's very difficult to bring your <laughs> wisdom along. <laughs> but especially it, it, in the rebel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's the last thing she wants. <laughs> but I, I you know, but then that is, is also the place for maybe having wise counsel that you trust. Yes. Not 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 the disco ball guru we're talking about, but really truly grounded wise counsel counsel of someone you who you would you would actually listen to in that process um i agree with that and and the word that i have seen used and agree with you know when when you're sort of if if you're coming into this fresh and or if you're coming out of that spiritual um city in some ways it is, it's a constructed space Mm. is um, to, to check in with that. When, when you encounter somebody who feels to have counsel to and for you, the question is, does it feel inflated? Is it simply wisdom or is it wrapped in shiny paper mm-hmm. and an inflated um, larger than life, larger than life, yeah, that's it. beyond what reality is, into the stars, what your guides say, what the blah, 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 you know, whatever, just it, it has a... Uh, um, it's plastic. In- it's plastic and it has a side show energy to mm, it. Well, yeah. In fact, one of one of the the um, glitter ball gurus I encountered at one point said to me they had been at uh, a community event, and this was near the end of my time in that space, and literally use the words yeah so i did some parlor tricks for them Mm. that's the essence of what we're talking about it 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 has a tone of illusion that when you check in with yourself now is it inflated is it grounded How is it impacting your system? Yeah, that all comes back down to looking within and knowing your body, knowing your spirit, knowing knowing yourself well enough to know how it's responding, how it's reacting, what its reaction is to the people and energy you're encountering. Yes, and trusting that. Mm, Boy, that's the big piece, isn't it? Trusting that. I don't know if you recall, but right after you and I connected, as our circle began to expand, there was a, a moment in time where I was encountering one of these um amazing in my nervous system and oh my gosh this is this is it this is beyond reality i've been looking and waiting for this mm-hmm. and i stepped into it and i called you later that afternoon and i was weepy and i said i feel afraid and i don't know why mm. and i i then because i was so new and so hungry my my being at the time 
I'm, I'm going to say chose to in parentheses, chose to now I can understand. At the time, I followed what felt true and mm-hmm. I stepped into it anyway with mm-hmm. the the dialogue of the fear is because I'm moving deeper into me. I'm going towards what I want. So of course I'm afraid it's unknown. And sometimes we don't there know. Was, sometimes sometimes we, we, we don't know. Yeah. Which leads me to my, the question I would ask you. You and I have each worked with mentors and spiritual advisors and also in our own way, um, whether we are currently living this as this is my work, we, we have been and still are, um, I would say, mentors and in some form, our energy is available to assist and guide and inv- advise others who are seeking to connect to the truth of themselves. Mm -hmm. So with that said, to someone who is uncertain how to connect to a mentor, they may desire a mentor, they may desire, for me, I love a soul companion, somebody who's going to walk beside me, not tell me, not light up my way from what they've experienced, but walk beside me with the wisdom of their own experience. Mm -hmm. I love that. How would you advise somebody who's new to this to sense and gauge within themselves the right path toward that. And those aren't all the, I I don't have quite the words, but I know you well enough to know that you sense what I'm asking. Yeah. Yeah. Well, to, to the disappointment of people in, in such states, (laughs) I'll say that, that, that level of, of it, mm, goodness, I was about to say excitement can be a red flag, but I remember having excitement with my with my teacher. It's um, so that's not necessarily mm-hmm. the guide. It's it. It is partly what I said before: someone who points you back to yourself who points you back to your own wisdom and truth. Someone who is welcoming and has tools and they lay them at your feet. Mm. They give you the tools and then say, they, they give you, they don't give you anything. They, they give you what they have but they never infringe on your own autonomy to do with that as you will. My teacher had not so many years on this earth, but she just, and especially towards the end when she, she knew that she was transitioning, she gave us as many tools as she could, as she could physically in, in this time and space that she had left. And and they were they were, those were the gifts. The tools were the gifts. Her presence was the gift. But never did she say, "You should do this," or mm-hmm. or you know, or tell us what to do, or um, take our authority from us. Mm-hmm. And so mm-hmm. that's a key. It is key. And so in the paradox of someone looking for guidance, that inner autonomy and inner sovereignty may not be fully developed, but everybody has it, whether it's you're fully aware of all all of its permutations or not. 
but this sense of who you fundamentally know yourself to be and what is true in your gut and your heart. Mm-hmm. It's so, it's so hard to it's so hard to put into words. There's something that um if it's something pulls you out of yourself, pulls you out of your your way of being, it just it takes it takes discrimination. It takes looking at it. Is this pulling me towards a better version of myself or into or out of myself? I was just had those exact words. Mm-hmm. And out of myself and into the energy, the magic, the power, the the psychic gifts, the the pleasure of another being. That's very different than feeling at ease with someone mm-hmm. who walks beside you. Those are different. Absolutely. And there's also the push-pull energy. Mm. Anytime you feel pushed, that's that's not you. And How I'm not saying we should distinct- Yeah, yeah, Go yeah. I, I wouldn't say we, we should, not that we don't want to expand beyond our own borders and and expand our who we are and our idea of who we are. But here's the thing: if someone is pushing you towards something and it doesn't feel right Mm. then you say no no is always an acceptable decision acceptable choice and even if that is the right move for you clearly it's not the right move for you in this moment be here now be here now and so that right move if it's if it's the next right step for you will be available when the time is right. Yes. No one can. And it, Go ahead. I was just going to say it, it feels important also to say you also can't get it wrong. Exactly. Some of yeah. coming into the wisdom and the, the ability to discern, to use discernment is having the experience that you you run through your system and your system says, yes, this is it. No, this is not. And even if you move towards what feels like a yes, and as you and I are talking about, evolution brings you to a place of going, that is not a yes for me now. I get it. And that's a no. Even and- when that happens, that's gold. Yes. I mean, you and I have each been in experiences that, that we would not choose again, that we would not, not say now were. Not the women we are. No, and that were in some ways detrimental to us at the time. But I, I count it all gold. I count it all. I count it all. Well, the, the Bible says I count it all joy. But it's it's that it all It all adds to our wisdom and our maturity and our experience. It just is, like, as you said, there's no wrong step. There is experience and wisdom gained. Yes. And the, the beauty for those who are asking these questions now is that although a short space of time has lapsed, six years for you and I, There is so much more available Mm. now. There are many more humans like you and I who are stepping back and going, "Uh, actually, I see the holes here, who have um, acquired through their own experience a discernment and a wisdom and a knowing. So it exists on this plane now. And you're right, it's everywhere. It's everywhere. It's everywhere. And the same self-questioning that we went through isn't going to come the exact same way. It's going to be different now because we're in a different time.
I was just thinking about um, back to the nature of, of those who have wise counsel to share it. Mm-hmm. When I've experienced it, it was um, a sense of safety mm-hmm. and trust. Arlia, how how did it feel or how does it feel in that wise counsel? I love those words because I actually dare say that the the spiritual glamour language is not going to use wise counsel. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> it's too grounded. It's too flat mm-hmm. for that energetic tone. How, what was my question for you? What did you just say? About the wise counsel being safe oh, yes. and trustworthy. Yes. So one, one piece I want to introduce here as well is that with that wise counsel still comes, um, I'm purposely choosing the language of a confrontation with your inner truth. So that still happens. Mm-hmm. How would you define the experience of coming face to face with your own inner truth? Like w- we've both experienced that. And I've seen people who were never in spiritual community also have the experience that I would say is tied to consciousness and being here now where you come face to face with a part of yourself or what you have believed that is no longer real. And it can sometimes feel very intense, very um, um, disruptive Mm -hmm. and very uncomfortable. Do you have any wisdom or language around how that is? Because how that is experienced in the spiritual glamour and how that is experienced in the presence of accumulated pure wisdom. Oof. Well, in the spiritual glamour arena, I would say it would be very painful and challenging and difficult to know what's then what's real and what isn't real disorienting disorienting that's a great word disorienting because there's so much illusion that there's nothing real to hold on to anymore if if something you've known as true is suddenly disrupted but in the in the the inner path that that shift it becomes more of a shift just a it can a subtle shift in mm. perception can change everything <laughs> everything and my teacher used to say perspective so if i get this right your perspective your pr- perspective is determined oh see i got it wrong your perception is determined by your perspective mm. Mm. And mm-hmm. so your perspective is is that place at which you are at choice to turn your energy to the left or the right, get your nose out of the corner and turn around and see what else is available. But in the so if if something like that happens, A, it can be very subtle. It can change mm-hmm. everything and nothing looks different on the outside, but it's it's a a whole reality shift. Mm-hmm. Likely, you're not going to become ungrounded. Likely, you're just right. going to continue in whatever grounded reality you have and can learn to adapt to this new perception. But if, if, that, if that awareness becomes, does unground you, does become disorienting, Actually, that's what that's what uh, Carolyn Mace calls spiritual emergency. You always have the ability to get back to literally get on the ground, mm-hmm. get your body on the ground, 
you do the basics. You get back to basics. You drink water. You get on the ground. You look at your body. I am here right now. And you give your body the time and your energy, the time to integrate awareness. Trusting and knowing that it will, which is not present in the spiritual glamour. In the spiritual glamour, it requires an awful lot of efforting to make that turn. Here's, and this I I know could be a whole different conversation, but here's what I also felt as you were speaking, which is you said in the spiritual glamour, it is, um, I can't remember your exact words because what I heard was traumatic. Mm -hmm. Yes. Which in the spiritual glamour, there's a constant cycle of trauma running through your system because there's always trauma to heal. There's always a next layer. There's trauma. There's trauma. That's why you do what you do. It's the trauma. Your nervous system is in trauma. And then there's more trauma from trying to clear the trauma. Whereas it's it's, it's the kind of, it's the kind of enlightenment that happens with a two by four over your head. Yes. That's the image I'm getting. Yes. I have to have pain and then I'll change it. It has to be painful. Whereas I go right back to you talking about, you use the language of maturity and wisdom and a spiritual advisor who you went from gives you the tools and then you said, no, it's not that. And it's basically, these are the tools I have used and this has been my experience and what is yours? There's no trauma in that. There's no trauma exactly. in the internal inquiry of what is true for me and what do I need. In it's this an moment. invitation. Yes. Yes. Gentle. So gentle. It's a vast difference. There's not, there's not the illusion of parlor tricks. Hmm. even in your nervous system up and down and this way and that way. And I'm struggling and I'm trying and I don't know. And there's an awful lot of that, that leads to putting your energy and faith into something you believe is more powerful than you, something or someone most often. That's the key. That's the key is is knowing that ultimately you are your own highest authority. Mm-hmm. Yes. And the greatest wisdom and presence beside you is one who holds that as true in themselves and can recognize and embrace and draw through the same in you. Uh They see and stand in their own sovereignty and thus respect yours. Yes. Oh. And walk with you as you deepen and immerse yourself in it. Mm -hmm. It's incredible to watch all of this unfold. And it feels like such a privilege to have had the experience that lends to this current wisdom and perspective and simply hold presence for me and anything and anyone that comes into my space. That's it. Yeah. And I, yes, I feel like that's one of the reasons I'm here is to be able to hold space and walk with and it's effortless. Mm -hmm. Oh, Jacqueline, thank you so much for this conversation. I adore you. And it is my pleasure. Thank you for the invitation.
Thank you for joining us today on the special edition of the Women's Sanctuary. I'll be back again soon with more guests and a special announcement. Thank you so much. We'll see you here again next time on the Women's Sanctuary.